aerodynamics is only for professional athletes. You know, I'm an amateur athlete, um, I'm a weekend warrior, I'm too slow for aerodynamics. Is this true? Is it false? Why is aerodynamics also important for amateur athletes? Yeah, I think when you come up with this question, the first thing you have to uh, think about um, is when does aerodynamic play? big role and it obviously depends on the speed and uh, aerodynamics becomes the biggest resistance at roughly 15 to 20 kilometers per hour so like, like if we talk about it's so like 15 in road cycling yeah, exactly. 15 to 20 for tt triathlon yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that's that's roughly when aerodynamics becomes the biggest resistance you have to overcome in order to keep moving uh, at your speed so this is a speed i think most amateur athletes or all of them can do and they, they usually even go faster, especially in competitions. So aerodynamics plays the biggest role uh, already all for amateur athletes. And then if we talk about watts, of obviously going slower, let's say 30 kilometers per hour, um, instead of 45, 50, what professional athletes can do, um, you still have aerodynamics as the major resistance. And the absolute difference in watts is less. But since you're going slower, it just takes you longer to complete the course. And therefore, a smaller difference also adds up in time and makes a big difference. Yeah, that's actually always a fun fact that I have for, for people is that the, the, the amateur athletes, like, like us, okay, you're a bit more than amateur, but um, you know, amateur athlete like me, um, from a time perspective, when I have an aerodynamic benefit, I actually gain a lot more time than the pro does with the same aerodynamic benefit just because I'm on the course for longer. And I think just to ad address the topic of speed, I think that's an important one. Like in, in road cycling, in gravel cycling, aerodynamic drag is typically around half of the power consumption that you have. In road cycling, because you're going faster, it's around about 69, 70%, again, depending on your speed. And if you go to the extreme, you're on the velodrome, it's like 90 to 95% of your drag, so uh, of your power consumption. Yeah. yeah, I mean, as JP mentioned correctly, um, the aerodynamic drag has a very um, exponential characteristics. So this is why like um, the velodrome, um, where they ride like 55 or even 65 kilometers per hour, the aerodynamic drag is much more important than at lower speeds. So, with, with, so, so like on the velodrome, you could say weight is, is almost unimportant from a overall speed. Like certainly for an hour record, it's, it's just you invested all in aerodynamics, right? Yeah, I mean, especially like the weight. If you, if you ride at constant speed, you just need the weight is only important in the acceleration phase. And as soon as you're on your speed, the weight does not matter at all. Yep. Uh, absolutely. So maybe jumping on from other topics, why at slower speed you still have really important aerodynamic effects. One of my favourites is also the topic of um, sailing effect. So lower speed. So we talk about the sailing effect. It's one of the things that good wheels bring for you, what good aero bike frames bring for you, and that's the, the thrusting effect. So you can use the wind to actually push you forward, just like a boat goes forwards. And the slower the speed, the bigger the effective crosswind angle you see when you ride and the more force you can generate with, with your wheels. So I think that's also a, an important one. You know, amateur athletes, the slower you go, the more sailing effect you get. So actually you benefit even more from the special aerodynamic characteristics that you get from these aero products um, as an amateur athlete than you do compared with the pro. So I always, I always like that one. Yeah, I think um, we can also mention here for uh, like a deep section good aerodynamic wheel um, at certain um, sidewind angles like you almost have a propulsion effect and zero drag. Yep, yeah, so front wheel, um, typically it's from around about 12 degrees of, of, of crosswind, of onset flow angle, so the, it's still a headwind, it's just coming from 12 degrees from the front. Um, with our 625 wheel, um, you're already producing, it already has zero drag for the wheel itself and any more angle that it sees, it's actually pushing you forward. So I think that's, a, that's the cool effect that you get through aero wheels, for example. Maybe just a final, final um, touch on the topic of, of weight again. So for triathletes out there, um, weight's pretty much unimportant. And I, I've got a, a figure here. We see typically per extra kilo you add to the bike rider system, um, it costs a pro athlete around about 30 seconds over 180 kilometres. 
But like you, um, Bjorn, said before, you know, if you took that kilo and you invested it in more aero equipment on the bike, deeper tube profiles, uh, maybe cockpits, whatever, um, you'll be gaining 10 times that amount, you know, 300 seconds, 400 seconds, you know, like five, six, seven minutes. So um, in triathlon, I'd say weight's almost unimportant. And then in road cycling, again, it's basically an uphill time trial where it makes a difference. Yeah, exactly. I mean, in general, obviously having a light bike is always good, um, as long as you don't have to set, make big sacrifices. I think that's that's the main point here. Um, having having a light bike is good, but the question is, what do you sacrifice in order to make it light? And then, um, if it is aerodynamics, you you should think twice, um, or let's put it the other way around: you should not do it at all. Um, and then aerodynamics, on the other hand, doesn't really need lead to adding weight all the time. It can also be uh, neutral in terms of weight. And um, yeah, it's just then a matter of choosing the right equipment or setting it up the right way. Absolutely. Actually, Adrian, so you're our, our leader in bike frame development, uh, doing a lot of bike frames with, with other brands, Canyon, Van Rizzle, Simplon. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's a really good point. You know, you can take a, the same cross section of tube, so a round tube, um, yet you can shape it differently and you can, you know, reduce the drag by 40, 50 percent in some cases compared to a round tube. So I, I would agree it's, you know, it's a question of how you use the weight that you've got. I mean, maybe just some insights from, from, from your side. You know, what are some key go-tos for people? They walk into a shop, they want to try and pick their bike. You know, which bits of the frame should they be looking at to get an idea? Has there been aerodynamic development on this frame um, so that they can judge it? Because like we said earlier, um, it's really hard for the end consumer to, to know, is, is this, they can pick it up. You can, you can say, oh, this bike is lighter. Easy, I can feel that. But is it more aerodynamic? What are the go-to kind of visuals that they can try and look for? Hard to say, but some go-to points. Yeah, I think we can certainly give some tips here. I mean, first of all, it's important to mention that aerodynamic drag consists out of two different parts. It's like one side, it's like the drag coefficient, which is um, given by the shape of, of the tube profiles, for example. And there is also the frontal area. And um, I mean, the first thing is always to check if the frontal area, so if you stay in front of the bike and look at it, and if the, the handlebar, for example, is narrow and the fork profiles are narrow, um, I think that's a, that's a good sign for um, good aerodynamic performance in the first place. And then in, a, in the second place, you would judge the tube profiles as, as good as you can. I mean, certainly we don't want to have sharp edges on, on the tubes. Um, round tubes are always um, critical when it comes to aerodynamics. So um, uh, just apply common sense, smooth shapes, Airfoil-like shapes are usually um, the go-to for, for aerodynamic uh, bikes. And, and we see a lot of these kind of cam tail shapes, so they're like an aerodynamic profile cut off at the back. D-shaped type of profiles, they're normally a pretty good go-to, right? Yes, um, I think on the profile curvature of the tubes, you can only do a limited amount of curvature before like the flow separates and then adds um, to the drag. And usually it's not possible to end in a, in a in a tip at the end of the profile. And so this is the reason why we, we see the camp tail profiles, um, especially also on, on UCI legal road bikes where the tube dimensions are limited. Um, then we just use the, the camp tail shape profile just to cut off the, the profiles um, and we get at most maximum of, distance. Yeah, and we get the, the most of the aero benefit without needing the, the full tail. Exactly, yes. OK, so maybe as a quick summary for everyone, um, Aerodynamic drag, if you want, I think this is important, if your target is to go faster, be more efficient, go racing, you have to consider aerodynamic drag in your, in your equipment selection, in your overall setup. Um, if, your, if your target is not to be fast, or not to go racing, but it's to go and have a ride with your mates and have a coffee on the ride and be healthy and happy, then maybe aerodynamics isn't the most important um, consideration for you. But in terms of performance, in terms of what's using your power that you put in the pedals, aero is king. And your kind of go-tos, 
check out the frame profiles, look at the shapes, um, read reviews. Tour Magazine, if you're in the German or European press, is pretty good because they do wind tunnel testing independently to verify what bikes are quicker. Um, but yeah, um, aerodynamic drag uh, is really important, um, even in the mountains. Maybe a small thing to add here. Um, aerodynamics is not only to, to ride fast, but it's also to ride more efficient at the same speed. And um, therefore, it is also important for uh, e-bikes, maybe. You can uh, increase the, the range um, without adding more battery and adding more weight, therefore, um, just doing more aerodynamic bikes and equipment. Absolutely. And ultra, ultra cyclists out there doing these long distance rates across America, uh, even I think this coming weekend uh, is, or in two weeks, is the unbound gravel race. You know, these are long distance races. Um, it's all about efficiency. And especially in these long distance races, we're not talking about seconds or minutes. It's potentially for a race across America, you're talking about hours that can be saved through aerodynamic optimization. So yeah, it's an efficiency game, not just a speed game.